what I'm going to talk to you about is the future of work. Um, yeah, this little chap is a, is a robot um, which is um, uh, produced in the west coast of the US, uh, which you can, you can train by uh, having a manual worker move his arms around. And once that's been done once, he will then repeat those actions uh, forever, without holidays, um, without sick time, uh, and so on. Um, and you know, the cost of these things is, is plummeting, and robots are going to take uh, all of our jobs, right? Well, actually, it's a little bit more complicated. So we decided we'd, um, we'd do the McKinsey thing and just crunch like massive volumes of data. So we looked at every single job in the US. There are about a couple of thousand different categories, which are defined by the US Department of Labor. And then we got the standard job descriptions for every job. And then we got an army of graduates um, to, to crunch through that and estimate how the automation potential of every job. And then we clustered that by industry. Um, and what you see is you know, at the top, 73% of, uh, of labor in accommodation and food services can be automated using technology that we know about right now, uh, which is frightening. So, for example, there's already now a robot which makes burgers, including the turning, the flipping, the frying, the assembling, the wrapping, and so on. And the cost of that robot is such that by buying one, uh, the payback is less than a year versus the cost of a worker. Uh, so the MOOC job um, is not going to be a relevant thing for much longer. Um, but the good news, the good news is it's all going to take much longer than people think. So what this is, is looking at adoption curves. And what you find is that, and we looked at all subsequent adoption rates of technology for major technologies, and then we looked at the rate of change of the adoption rate of technologies and tried to predict how fast all of this current technology was actually going to be taken up and impact the labor force. Um, and you can see a certain acceleration in certain types of technology. So, for example, you know, the radio took something like 30 years to get to, uh, you know, get to 50 million people. Uh, the television took 25 years. Um, Facebook took about a year. Um, Pokemon Go took about six hours. Uh, so you've got very, very fast uptake of new technology. But the reality is that technologies that really change the way that the work is done are much slower to, to, to take off. So what you see is actually... Even with the existing technology that we're aware of, when you forecast forward, um, the, you know, the orange is the technical potential. The actual potential, by the time you take into effect all of these different um, discounting factors, it's going to take till about 2060, 2055 for all of these things to ripple through, which is good news. Um, and actually, it's better news, you think, because contrary to what you hear in the press about you know, this is all going to cause a big problem for our economy, uh, the reverse is true. And let me explain why. What's going on at the moment is in developed markets, uh, there's no labor growth, no, literally none, because of the demographic. And therefore, the only way you can achieve economic growth is by productivity growth. Uh, any of you who've read up on this will know that productivity growth has been a huge problem uh, for developed markets going forward. Um, but productivity growth is um, driven by technology, technology advances. Well, I'm gonna, I won't go through every bar here, but what it basically says is that to um, you, you know, to achieve anything like the kind of growth um, in GDP per capita that we've seen historically, we will have to employ, deploy, and um, reap the full benefit of all of this technology. Because the, it is the only way uh, that we can keep uh, GDP growth going at a rate somewhere near close to what we've been used to. How do you personally uh, you take advantage of these set of trends? First of all, you explore. There's a, a, an amazing world of change going on right now ar around you, and um, you, it, it's uh, it's very hard to keep up with. I, I try and spend an hour or two a day reading around just to try and, and keep in touch with the technology and what's changing, the different uh, uh, the different shifts. Learning. Uh, we'll all need new skills. All of us. Uh, I don't personally think that actually learning to code is necessarily that helpful. Um, you learning how to use statistical tools for data and analytics, more interesting. Learning how to weld may be relevant too. Um, it, we all need to dream a bit more. We're, the, we're in a world of immense possibility. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always enthused when I see young people who are starting new businesses around really wild ideas because they seem to be succeeding. Um, 
And then finally, challenge. I think what we're seeing in many, many sort of established businesses, large businesses, are not making anything like the right productivity improvements that they need to make because they're not challenging the status quo enough. The short uh, summary of the future of work, there's a lot of change. Technology is, is going to drive a very big shift in the labour force, but it's all goodness because it has to be embraced at maximum pace just to make up for the fact that the labour force is static. Thank you. Thank you very much.